I was bored, really bored. The entire day passed by while arranging my belongings. I had brought 18 luggage and all of them were unpacked now. At least one of the main tasks was completed unpacking. Scratch that, it was the only task I had. Five of my luggage contained my clothes while the other five had my shoes. Another three of my luggage had makeup and body products. Two luggage included different novels that I set on the shelf where Ace kept space for me. Perks of marrying my best friend. He knew exactly how much space I would need and for what stuff. Out of the three remaining luggage, one had my accessories while another had the giant purple teddy bear I called Velvet. Dad gifted it to me on my 13th birthday and she has been my buddy since then. I placed her on the couch so that I could cuddle with her anytime I would want. I texted Ace about it and he left me on scene zone. The nerve of that guy. The last luggage had plenty of lingerie. I thought I would head straight to honeymoon with Simon after my marriage, but who knew I would end up with Ace. I talked to dad during the day and he was in sound health. I told him to start dating now that I was settled too. It was evening and Ace would be home soon. There was fun living in a joint family because I could gossip with grandma and Emma today. I chatted with Luna and Aunt Chloe too until they had to leave for work. My thoughts were disrupted when Ace stepped inside and his first words were, Velvet can't be on the couch. I looked at him with a tight-lipped smile. Welcome home, Mr. Ace Valentino. He sighed and said while making his way to the closet room, keep her somewhere else. Why? I questioned him. What problem do you have with my Velvet? It's already weird enough for me to see you every time I step into my room. The last thing I would want is a creepy soft toy looking at me while sitting on my couch every time I step into my room, he explained to me. I wanted to argue with him on how he could call my velvet creepy but when I realized he was technically right, I frowned. So where should I keep it? I asked curiously. You can keep it in the room next to this one, where I kept your luggage at first. With that, he went to the bathroom. I sucked in a deep breath and walked towards velvet. I'm sorry but you can't live here, you distract Ace. I carried her in my arms. I should have taken you to the gym with me. I mumbled while struggling to carry her to the room next to mine. Ace seemed to hear me because he hollered, you never went to the gym in the first place. I rolled my eyes. Shut up. After dinner, I was peacefully sitting on the bed, flipping the pages of the novel I was reading. I applied my face pack too which I applied every night before going to sleep. I was in my night suit already that reached up to my knees. I had another one reaching up to my thighs but I wanted to avoid wearing that temporarily. Fuck. I shrieked hearing Ace's sudden voice. I placed a hand over my chest and glared at him, only to find him glaring back at me. What is wrong with you? I asked in annoyance. Right question but the wrong person to ask, he uttered. What the hell is wrong with you? I furrowed my brows. What is wrong with me? That is exactly what I ask you. He retorted and walked towards the couch with the laptop in his hand. What happened though? I was beyond confused now what we were even talking about. Why are you sitting on the bed with a ghostly appearance? When I realized what he was talking about I burst into laughter. So you got scared because of the clay mask on my face. Giving the face mask a better name doesn't change my mind that you look like a ghost, he deadpanned. I was still laughing at his reaction. He further spoke. What do you ladies get by doing this stuff apart from scaring us? I don't know about others but I love doing skincare. It's kinda my habit which I can't change. The face mask gives me a refreshing vibe I enlightened him. Besides this face is loved by millions of people if you forgot, so I gotta protect this beauty. He chuckled at my words and looked at the screen of the laptop. He was in the study after he returned home. I thought his work was finished which was why he came to the bedroom, but he was still working. If you didn't complete your work, why are you here? I couldn't help but ask. He looked at me for a brief moment and answered, Mom said that I was newly married so I should give some time to my wife. She didn't know you were busy scaring the shit out of me. I chortled and got up from the bed to wash my face when the timer on my phone went off. 
Once I washed my face and applied my night cream, I returned to the bedroom only to find Ace now laying on the right side of the bed. He did everything following a routine and now it was his time to sleep. Fortunately, I left the left side of the bed. Quietly, I hopped on the bed. It was weird sharing a bed with Ace. I wasn't even mentally prepared for this. I took my novel from the nightstand after tucking my legs under my blanket. As soon as I started reading, the room went into pure darkness. I gasped in fear. Ace, did you turn off the lights? Yes, he mumbled groggily. Turn them on, I ordered. He turned the lights on and asked, What happened? Don't tell me you can't sleep in darkness because I can't sleep with the lights on. I looked at him with my puppy eyes. I have the habit of reading novels till I fall asleep, so I won't be able to read without light. And if there's no reading, I won't be able to sleep. Then my 8 hours beauty sleep will be ruined under. I was interrupted by him. And you will have a pimple, I get it. I get it. Now quiet. If you know it, why did you turn off the lights? I asked, narrowing my eyes in his direction. He rolled his eyes. Because I won't be able to sleep with the lights on and then, without sleep, I won't be able to work properly. The fear of not working properly was visible in his eyes. Then what should we do? We have to come to a conclusion which will be right for both of us, I let out. He twitched his lips. You can keep the lamp of your nightstand on during reading and then turn it off after you finish reading. The other lights will remain off by the way. I gave a nervous chuckle without uttering any word. They seemed to read my thoughts as he asked with a sigh. You're afraid some ghost might pull you by your leg when you sleep in darkness, aren't you? Not my fault. You are the one who forced me to watch that kind of horror movie on your birthday eight years ago, I protested. A smile formed on his lips remembering that day. Yeah, you and I were the only people in the theater, and you made sure I went deaf temporarily. You were even scaring me more saying someone will pull my leg from beneath the seat, I complained, which made his smile widen. He shook his head with a smile and said, okay, fine, how about after you turn off the lights, you hold my hand before sleeping. I arched my eyebrow, are you saying I can hold your hand when I'm scared? He nodded his head. Yes, is it just for today? He gave me a warm smile as he spoke. It's for every time you get scared. I returned his smile with a smile. Good night, Ace. Good night, Ava. He laid back on the bed, turning off all the lights. Only the lamp of my nightstand was on. I finished reading a few pages of the novel until I started feeling sleepy. When a yawn escaped my lips, I closed the book and placed my hand over Ace's slowly. Then I turned off the lamp and fell asleep, knowing even if some ghost pulled me today, I would drag Ace with me. And if Ace was there, I had nothing to fear.